All right, today we're going to talk about the fractional inch. And just as a quick recap for where we're headed with this, if you're in America, you're probably stuck still dealing with two measurement systems. So one would be SI, which is the metric system, and many people are familiar with that. It's a 10 base system and fairly easy to work within. But then again, we're also stuck with the standard system, sometimes known as the imperial system, where we have things like feet, inches, miles, pounds, ounces, and all of these kind of mismatched types of, of measurements and uh, ways to gauge things. Now, when it comes to inches, we can use a decimal inch, which is actually pretty similar to the metric system, or we can use the fractional inch. And fractional inches are used a lot in the building trades, uh, in construction, and in many other places. In fact, our threading systems and many of our other mechanical systems are still based around kind of feet and inches. So what we're going to do today is we're going to examine this whole idea of a fractional inch. And we're going to do this by illustrating how those fractions kind of come to be in an inch. And maybe it'll make a little more sense versus the standard 10 base system in metric. So let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to do first is we're going to do an illustration. And I'm going to draw an inch, except it's going to be really big. Now, arbitrarily, you could make this any length you wanted to. This demonstration will still work. Okay. So we've got a line. And right now, our line has some specific length Okay, in the inst instance of an inch. It's, of course, one inch. And we've got a question here. And the question is quite simple. The question is, how do I divide this into some type of equal part that we can use for smaller measurements? And in the metric system, taking a line like this and dividing it into 10 equal parts is doable, but it's not super, super simple. There's some other things we'd have to set in place. There is, however, a very simple way to at least divide this line in half. And we're going to use some very old school tools. One of them happens to be this. So if you've ever used a compass before, a compass is really just two legs with one pivot point, And of course, we can adjust the legs as necessary. And it's oftentimes used to create circles and arcs. Now, in order to divide this in half, we're going to take our compass and we're going to set the distance arbitrarily to anything past the halfway point. So you can eyeball it, make sure it's more than halfway, and go ahead and adjust it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our point of our compass and we're going to place it on one end point of our line. And then we're just going to swing an arc. Then what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to the other side and do the exact same thing. We're going to place the end point of the compass on the line and we're going to go ahead and swing an arc. It's as simple as that. Now in a perfect world, if you're having trouble visualizing what's going on here, really what we're doing is we're constructing two circles. So there would be a circle right here and of course a circle right here. The interesting part is that when we use this line, this line falls, the endpoints line up with the center point of each circle, and those two circles overlap. So now we have an intersection and an intersection. And if I take a straight edge, it doesn't have to be a ruler, just a straight edge, and I go ahead and draw in between those intersection points. So we could even go the whole way if we want. What's happened now is we've bisected this line segment, okay? And if I take my ruler, hopefully, this will wind up being exactly at the 12 inch mark. And it is, okay? So halfway between that 24 inch line. This will work every time if you do it accurately. So essentially what we've done is we've taken our line and divided it in half. From there, it's a real quick jump. If I take this side and make that a zero, and I take this end point, and make it a one and say that's my inch, we've now come up with the halfway point or one half of an inch. From there, we also technically have two halves of an inch, so one and two. But what if we had to use something that was smaller than a half of an inch? Well, we could repeat the same trick and we could use these two points to draw our arcs, okay? So something like this and then draw the line in between. And what we wind up with is this split into two pieces. 
and if we did it over here, that would be split into two pieces. And now we've got a quarter, two quarters, three quarters, and of course, four quarters of an inch. So we've taken one piece, cut it in half to get two pieces, cut those two halves in half to get four pieces, and then the pattern begins to repeat. If we need something smaller, we divide the quarter in half again, and we split the inch yet again. And that leaves us with eighths of an inch. So I've got one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, and of course, eight eighths. And then we could go through the process yet again, and we could take a look at this, split the eighth in half with our compass, and that's going to leave us with sixteenths of an inch. So I've got one sixteenth, two sixteenths, three sixteenths, four sixteenths, five sixteenths, six sixteenths, seven. 8 sixteenths, 9 sixteenths, 10 sixteenths, 11 sixteenths, 12 sixteenths, 13 sixteenths, 14, 15 sixteenths, and of course 16 sixteenths. Alright, so we've got 16 equal pieces. All right. Now, we could take this even further. We could go in here and break our sixteenths in half and wind up with thirty seconds of an inch. And we could take those thirty seconds of an inch, cut those in half again, and get sixty-fourths of an inch. There are rulers in all those designations. Most rulers or measuring instruments will either have eighths of an inch, sixteenths, thirty seconds, or sixty-fourths. I have heard tales of old-time machinists who could take a sixty-fourth of an inch and cut it in half visually to make one one-twenty-eighths of an inch. Um, obviously, I've never seen a ruler like that, but I'm told that people could do that. All right, so that's where we get all of those fractions, and that's how we wind up with 16 sixteenths in an inch. Now that we've divided our inch into 16 equal pieces, the next question is, how do I take a measurement? And if we have a measurement, let's just say this length, so we're trying to figure out what that distance is. The easiest way I can tell you, if you're not familiar with jumping between all these numbers and fractions, is to simply count the number of lines and put it over top of 16. So we know our answer is going to be something over top of 16. So I have a zero right here, which means I don't have any whole inches. Okay, so I'm just going to have a fraction. And I'm going to start by counting the lines. Don't count the zero line. Count the next one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12. I'm going to take that number, place it over top of 16, and I have my measurement. Okay. And if you don't believe me, if we look right down here, 12 sixteenths. Okay. Now the problem is, it's not good practice to use an unreduced fraction or an unsimplified fraction. So what we're going to do now is reduce this to what it's supposed to be. Two different ways that we can go about this. Number one, we can use greatest common factor Okay. And by greatest common factor, I mean that we're going to find a nice whole number that divides equally into both the numerator and the denominator. Okay, So into the top and in the bottom. And if we take a look at these numbers, 4 is something that equally goes into 12 and 16. So if I divide the top and the bottom by 4, well, we'll take a look. 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 16 divided by 4 is 4. And if we take a look at our measurement, it's three quarters of an inch. Okay? Three quarters and twelve sixteenths are exactly the same thing. This is just reduced. It's easier to read. Now, if you don't like doing the whole greatest common factor thing, there's another way for us to go about this. It adds an extra step or two, but it makes it a little bit easier. So if I take twelve over sixteen, and I take a look at this, if my top number, if my numerator is even, I'm going to start by dividing by 2. And 12 divided by 2 gives me 6. 16 divided by 2, as we know, is 8. 
So once I have my 6 over 8s, if my top number is still even, I'm going to divide by 2 again. And 6 divided by 2 equals 3, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. And we wind up with 3 quarters, just like before. So you can see it adds another step, but it still comes up with the same result. And ultimately what we're looking for is an odd number over an even number. Okay, now that we have our fraction figured out and reduced, there's just a few rules I want you to remember about when and when not to reduce your fractions. And it's really, really simple. We take our initial measurement, so 12 over 16, and we take a look at it. If we have an even over an even number, we need to reduce every time. If we have something like an odd over an even number, you're done. So there's no need to reduce it. All right, and we take a look at some of the things on our ruler here. 9 over 16. 9 is an odd number. I don't have to reduce it, and you'll see there's nothing below it. Okay. If you have something like an even number over top of an odd number, you're doing something wrong. You should never have an even number over an odd number. In fact, the only thing that you should ever wind up with are four fractions. So we should have halves quarters, eighths, or sixteenths. That's it. Okay. And if we take a look at those four numbers, remember we said that to get this inch, we started by cutting the inch in half, and then we got a half of a half, and then a half of a half of a half, and then a half of a half of a half, okay. so that we could wind up with sixteen equal pieces. And if we take a look at this just to prove it, sixteen divided by two is eight, eight divided by two is 4. 4 divided by 2 is, of course, 2. And technically speaking, we also have 1 over 1 or a whole number. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Okay. So those are the basics of reading a ruler using fractional inches. It's one of those things that you need to practice. You don't get good at measurement by not doing it. So the more you read these, the more comfortable you'll get with all of the different fractions. Ultimately, they're all in sixteenths in this case. We're just reducing them to get a more easy, uh, easier to read number. Okay, so I hope that helps.